What's good, YouTube? It's White Mike, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the surprise Sony announcement. Let's get into it. All right, guys, Sony just had a surprise announcement and they announced the A7S III. So you now have the A7 III, the A7 R3, and the A7S III. The A7S III keeps the same body as the A7 III and the A7 R3. Same joystick and all that good stuff. Same Z battery. You don't get the flippy up screen and all that stuff like you see on the A6400. It's just gonna be just like this one, but I mean, that's fine. I've been waiting for this camera personally for a while. The A7S II has this format. So this is the A7 R2, but the A7S II has this old format it takes the smaller batteries so the battery life was not that great and I mean this announcement comes just in time from what I understand this camera is gonna be released in Q4 of this year I have a link to the specs below and I'm gonna pull up the specs on my phone here and just read them off to you so again there's no flip up screen like the a6400 you do get some of those a6400 features but the flip up screen will probably come in like the 4 series with the a7 IV a7 r4 things like that so it says here that it has an 18 megapixel backside illuminated stacked CMOS sensor so right now the only camera that has the stack sensors is the A9, but with this announcement, the A7S III goes from the 12 megapixels in the A7S II to the 18 megapixel backside illuminated stack CMOS sensor that also includes the Bion X image processor with front end LSI, which is the same front end LSI that you get on the A9. So that's great, which is probably gonna be needed for some of these specs I'm about to read to you. So the camera has 693 point AF system. That's 425 of those are contrast. The rest are phase. So they finally put phase detection in this camera. That's one thing I hated about the A7S II is that it only had contrast. It was really slow and not very accurate and it couldn't track for crap. It has 10 frames a second as well which is on par with the a7 III which they could probably do more but since this is a video camera they probably didn't want to it, it's probably capable of the same as the the a9 so I'm surprised there but they, they probably could have left it at 5 and it would have been fine but I mean 18 used to be what like sports cameras like the Canons and Nikon top-of-the-line models used to be like 18 so I mean it's plenty for photos now it has the same viewfinder and touchscreen from the a7 R3 so you do get that upgrade over like the a7 III has a I mean it's not as good but I don't notice the difference, honestly. It has the dual card slots, of course, because it's the same body style, which is still the first slot is probably gonna be UHS-2, the other one UHS-1. So here comes the, the big specs that everyone is looking for. So it's gonna have 6K at 24 and 30. That's no oversampling, and that's because you have 18 megapixels, so you can't oversample 6K because the sensor size is 6K. But I mean, 6K, man, you have to get a red right now to get 6K, so that's that's a really good feature. I wasn't expecting anything like that or slow motion, so that's definitely great. I mean, technically, like the a7 III, a7 R3s, they shoot in 6K and they downsample to 4K, so I mean, this shouldn't be as a surprise, I guess. Um, you also get 4K at 24 and 30, and then finally, finally, they give us 4k 60 so that is oversampled so you get a 6k image pushed down to 4k from the camera so that's gonna be great as well so you're gonna get that higher detail and quality full HD you get 24 30 60 120 and then here you go you get 240 now it does have a two times crop from my understanding 240 again you have to get something like a FS something I don't know anything about the cinema cameras but 240 in a consumer camera that's just crazy I will probably put that to use personally I probably wouldn't shoot at that all the time because of the crop but you can get you a pretty good APS-C lens and probably shoot that pretty good. S-Log2 now has dual native ISO as well as S-Log3. The dual native ISOs are 400 and 1600. So what does that mean? That means you can shoot at either 400 which used to be 800. So now you can use, shoot at the lower 400. Like I'm shooting this video on 800 but I'd be able to shoot this at 400 if I don't want to to get the best quality. So you want to shoot at that native ISO to get the best quality. So now you can shoot at 400 or 1600 and at either one of those you're going to get the same picture quality. So that's really good for low light. You also get the new color science from the A6400, which it looks amazing from the A6400 videos. You get the A6400 focusing features, which that's the active eye tracking, the touch focus tracking, the animal eye tracking, all that good stuff that the A9 got. And then you also get 10-bit 422, but that's only via HDMI. And then you have 8-bit 420 internal, which is no surprise, but I'm glad they finally gave us 10-bit out, which is awesome. So they finally gave us that 10-bit 422 output that everyone's wanted. I don't need that internally. I always shoot externally anyways now. And then in terms of ISO, the max ISO now is insane. 
Although you do get the dual native ISO 400 and 600, the max ISO now is 819,200. That is crazy. Probably won't look good at that ISO. I think the A7S II had a 409, 600 or something like that. That was like the max, so it, it's almost doubled the max ISO now. I don't think I ever exceeded something like a 100,000 ISO with the A7S II when I shot with it, and it was still decent. So I mean, take that with a grain of salt. So again, A7S III is finally announced. They didn't give us a price yet, but they did say it's going to be Q4 this year. And again, 18 megapixel backside illuminated stack. CMOS sensor, you got the front end LSI, you got phase detection, 10 frames a second, the same body style as the, all the other three series, 6K, 4K, Full HD 240, S-Log 2, ISO 400 and 1600 dual native ISO, like, I don't know, like, what is gonna compete with this, honestly? I know some of the Panasonic full frame cameras they came out with are pretty nice, but that focusing system is not on par with Sony's, and I think it's even gonna get better here, so I think I'm probably gonna end up selling both of my A7 threes to get this camera, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. Was this a surprise to you guys as it was to me? I was thinking it would be announced this year, but probably not this soon. I was thinking maybe in a few months. But yeah, if you have any questions about the A7S III that was just announced, please leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you immediately. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And uh, hit the notification bell if you're into that. Again, I'm going to leave a link in the description. That's going to take you to where the A7S III specifications and press release are. So yeah, that's a wrap. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> I just had to. I couldn't resist.